Here's what man-eaters like. At one point, I made my car-sized shark leap out of the water at the foot of a statue of a horse. I flopped around on the cobblestones, chasing and chomping drunk revelers. Neither lack of limbs nor lack of oxygen could deter me from my quest to consume the people of the fictional Port Clovis. As I carried screaming partiers back into the water to finish them off, actor Chris Parnell's voiceover narration filled in some interesting details about the monument my prehistoric killing machine was defiling. The spring of 73 was a magical time in Port Clovis when local favorite Trash Talk placed 20th in the Derby and the city placed first in the country for petty theft. And that led to a new holiday in the town, since the local population, known for public drunkenness and petty crime sprees, was eager to celebrate. Maneater provides a lot of these kinds of moments, mixing ridiculous carnage and reality show absurdity to create something hilarious. It's sometimes an uneven experience, due largely to frustrating combat and some repetitive missions, but the longer it goes on, the more fun Maneater becomes, and its presentation keeps it from getting stale. Apart from the joy of eating people, it's the inspired presentation that really makes Maneater work. The game is framed as if it's a cheap, basic cable reality show, following your shark on its revenge trip against an uncouth Cajun shark hunter called Scaly Pete. Think Deadliest Catch meets Planet Earth, but much dumber and goofier and narrated by Jerry from Rick and Morty. This is an adult bull shark. Fast, fierce, and armed quite literally to the teeth, she has little to fear here in the Gulf. You're after Pete because he killed your shark mom on the day you were born. In response, you bit off his hand, then began your quest to eat everything and everyone you could in order to get huge and exact vengeance. As you swim through the game's various biomes and eat everything in sight, Parnell's narrator mixes actual shark facts or what sound like facts, at least, with plenty of gags at the expense of drunken disorderly Port Clovisians, wealthy shoreline property owners, humanity's exploitation of the ocean, and particularly boring fish. The profusion of parrotfish here have kept Sapphire Bay's local hammerhead healthy and strange looking. The comedy is a huge part of what makes Maneater work, because otherwise living the shark life would probably be kind of boring. In each area of Port Clovis, your goal is to complete a bunch of quests to lure out the local apex predator and eat it, and to lure out some humans and eat them, in order to level up your shark and gain new mutations that make you better at eating stuff. Most of the quests are pretty simple. Eat 10 of X fish, eat 10 humans at X location, eat X predator. But Maneater keeps these quests pretty short and manageable, while mixing in comedy and balancing them with a few other activities. Each area has collectibles to track down, like landmarks both in and out of the water that serve as opportunities for more jokes and pop culture references. You can track down and eat tougher predators in the area to test out your skills in combat, and if you chomp enough humans, Port Clovis will send shark hunters after you like cops in a Grand Theft Auto game. Those fights can be even tougher as the hunters bring along boats and automatic weapons, but play into the mayhem side of the game, where you can fling your shark through the air to land on boats, gobble the hunters aboard, and smash the vessels to splinters. Combat against dangerous creatures is all about watching your enemy's movements and getting in a few chomps when they're vulnerable. A dedicated dodge button helps you get out of the way of attacks as creatures like alligators and mako sharks dart toward you, and as you gain mutations, you get perks that help you stun or poison prey or absorb more damage. You also regain health by consuming fish, so especially in the early game, victory is about beating strategic retreats and eating strategic treats to get back up to fighting strength. Fighting in Maneater can be fraught when you're facing predators, since you and your enemies dart toward each other like missiles and frequently pass each other. Maneater lets you center the camera on your enemy by clicking a control stick or hitting a dedicated button on PC, but it lacks a true lock-on system for some reason, so it's easy to lose track of what you're fighting, and that can open you up to vicious attacks. And especially in earlier, shallower regions, this can make combat a bit of a mess. The camera can bump up against nearby landmasses, which makes keeping track of your attacker even tougher with little room for evasion. And if you hit the water's surface, you get locked into an above water view until you hit a specific button to dive back down, tearing you out of combat even as the thing you're fighting is gunning for you. Fighting predators is a pain in the early portion of the game especially, but gets better as you progress to the areas with deeper water and earn mutations that give you an edge. All that eating and destroying plays into the RPG side of Maneater, where you gain nutrients to level up your shark and the individual mutations for each part of your body. Once you unlock lots of mutations and level them up, they provide a strategic component. 
If you know you're going after boats, you'll want the strong and defensive bone mutations equipped. For fighting predators, the stunning powers of the bioelectric set might be a better choice. It takes a while for the mutations to really have a meaningful effect on gameplay, but once you start maxing out upgrades, they help create the experience that is Maneater's beating, delicious heart, making you into a huge, ludicrous, nearly unstoppable killing machine. <laughs> Shark must now be killed and publicly displayed to satisfy the city's thirst for revenge. Maneater's Mayhem would work better on the whole if not for the camera issues, the loose, panicky nature of the combat, and some of the technical issues we faced while playing, at least on PS4 Pro. In certain biomes, the frame rate would often take a dive, which was especially frustrating when trying to survive an onslaught of hunters or a pack of hammerheads but we didn't see the same issues with the Xbox One or PC versions. I also ran into a rare bug that wiped my save file, and another that broke a few collectibles so that I couldn't unlock all the mutations. But developer Tripwire says both those issues have been fixed with a launch day patch. Issues aside, Maneater's opportunities for shark chaos can be a lot of fun. But instead of a guy running around with an arsenal of weapons, you're a monster shark, launching itself 30 feet into the air, barrel rolling straight through a boat, and plucking some screaming dork right off the bow for good measure. With its sharply written, hilariously delivered narration, and story beats to freshen up the experience as you go along, Maneater becomes a goofy, fish-flopping romp with a good balance of limbs to sever, boats to wreck, and challenging creatures to render into bite-sized chunks. Maneater isn't a perfect shark simulator, but it is a fun and funny one whose positive adaptations outpace its drawbacks. <laughs>